Hello, welcome to our lesson on rectangular prisms and volume. Let's do this. We're going to talk about what volume looks like. We're going to look at a formula for finding the volume of a rectangular prism. We're going to throw in a couple of word problems and practice. So let's get started. First off, volume is the number of cubes inside of a three-dimensional object. So if we're looking at volume, we would typically look at it like this. How many cubes are inside there? And cubes are three-dimensional squares on all faces blocks. Now, the one thing um, with th this volume is that if you mix up what the labels are, length, width, and height, it doesn't really matter. And that's kind of nice because the reason it doesn't matter is because you could turn it on its side, right? And then the length, width, and height become there, there, and there, right? Same shape, length, width, height, doesn't really matter. You can switch them around. So if you're given a picture, you can substitute any of the numbers in for length, width, or height, and it won't make a difference. And that's kind of nice when we get on to looking at our formula. So here is the formula. Again, we're trying to find how many cubes there are inside of an object that looks like this. The way we would do that is to do length times width times height. And again, it doesn't matter the order you put the numbers in because you could turn this shape right, left, it doesn't matter, right? So I'm going to put in that three is the length, two is the width, and four is the height. If you decided to turn this on its side and make three the height and two the width and four the length, that's fine because you're multiplying. And when you multiply all the numbers, you're going to get the same exact result. Our volume is 24 square centimeters. All right? And that's how this works. That's how the formula for um, volume of a rectangular prism works. It's pretty straightforward. And it's as long as you multiply the length, width, and height in any order, you're going to get the right answer. Now, I do want to show you something here, and that's the that I said cubic centimeters or centimeters raised to the power of three. Because volume is in three dimensions, the units are cubed or raised to the power of two. In our previous lesson, we've talked about area, right? The area of a triangle. And when we did that, we had square feet, right? Feet raised to the power of two. So if it's in three dimensions, you raise it to the power of three. If it's in two dimensions, you raise it to the power of two. This is one way that I use to try and remember whether I'm taking my unit and raising it to the power of three or to the power of two. Are you working in three dimensions or two dimensions? Area is flat, it's two dimensions. Volume is three dimensions, so we raise to the power of three. All right, now let's use the formula. I want you to calculate the volume of this rectangular prism using the formula that volume is length times width times height. Pause and practice, go for it. Hey, welcome back. I wrote four times one times two, length, width, and height. If you change the order of the numbers, it won't matter. You will still get the answer of eight. Four times one is four times two is eight. That's how you calculate volume. Time to do another practice. I want you to calculate the volume of this rectangular prism. It's a special one. Um, go ahead and calculate that goat. Hey, this one here seemed maybe a little bit strange. Our volume was one times one times one. One yard by one yard by one yard. It gave us one cubic yard. Now, the reason I did this is because one cubic yard is actually a very common measurement. If you're ordering mulch or something for your yard or um, anything that's measured in cubic yards, it might be that, um, that you do that. I think uh, cement you order cement concrete um, in cubic yards as well. So cubic yards are used a lot with like landscaping and construction and stuff. And what a cubic yard means is it's one yard by one yard by one yard. All right, so it's one cubic yard. One times one times one is one. 
All right. Now we're going to move on to talking about something a little bit different. We're going to talk about the base of an a three-dimensional rectangular prism. If you're asked to calculate the area of the base, what you're asking for are those squares down there. Notice that that's a rectangle and we're calculating the area of a rectangle. The area is length times width. And in this case, it would be four times two, which gives us eight square centimeters. That is the area of the base. If you are asked to find the volume, given the area of the base, you would take that area of the base and then multiply it times the height. So here's a new formula that B is the area of the base. So if you're given the area of the base or if you're asked to calculate the area of the base or if you're asked to find the volume when you're given the area of the base and the height, all you're doing is multiplying the area of the base, which is eight square centimeters, in this case times one, which is the height, and that would give us eight cubic centimeters. So that might have seemed a little bit strange that we're doing that, but this is a formula that you will see used quite often, the area of the base times the height. All right, so let's look at it. And why do we use this formula? And the reason that we use this formula is because this will work with all types of prisms. It will work with rectangular prisms, triangular prisms, even cylinders, you find the area of that circle and then you multiply it times the distance between the circles. Um, with a trapezoidal prism, you'd find the area of the trapezoid and then multiply it times the height, which is the distance between the two trapezoids. There's a pentagonical, I guess, um, prism where it's a pentagon on the ends and you would multiply, find the area of the pentagon and multiply it times the height. So this method works and it's used quite a bit. The volume of a rectangular prism is a little bit easier because it's a rectangle. It's just length times width. So the volume is just length times width times height. But this is another way to find the volume. Let's practice this just a little bit. I want you to calculate the volume of a rectangular prism that has a base area of 14 square centimeters and a height of 5 centimeters. Here's your formula. Volume is the area of the base times the height. So we would take that 14 times 5 and that would be our volume. That's it. So it's a pretty straightforward formula, if you're, especially if you're given the area of the base. Let's do another one where you try it out. I want you to calculate the volume of a rectangular prism with a base area of six square centimeters and a height of 12 centimeters. Go ahead and try that one out using this formula. The volume is the area of the base times the height. Go. Welcome back. Did you do six times 12, which gives you 72? That's it. So it's pretty straightforward math, um, just multiplying the numbers, but this is a very practical um, formula when you know the area of the base. All right, let's go back to our original equation and try the or our original formula and try this one out. I want you to pause and practice. Calculate the volume of a rectangular prism with a length of four inches, a width of five inches, and a height of ten inches. Try that one out. Go. Hey, welcome back. You're told the length, width, and height, so you would set it up like that and multiply through. Notice we have cubic inches at the end. It is cubic inches because those are cubes. We're multiplying in three dimensions. We will be raising to the power of three. One more practice problem. My trailer measures four feet long, three feet wide, and two feet deep. What is the volume of my trailer? Well, I'm going to use this equation, so go ahead and try that out. I want you to solve this question. Go. All right, we're told the length, how long it is is the length, how wide it is is the width, and the depth would be the height. 
So we're multiplying 4 times 3 times 2 to get 24 cubic feet. Notice um, we are saying cubic feet for this trailer. Zoop, there we are. Okay, a couple of things to remember. You can do the area of the base times the height, or you can do length times width times height with rectangular prisms. Be prepared to do both. You're going to get to practice both on the worksheet, and you will see both types in the quiz and also um, in your practice questions. Good luck, and have a wonderful day.